old boy system is still in place, how will you possibly get anything done? You know, it's, it's a great question, but politics is not personal for me. This is about making sure we work for the people of this state. So whether it's me fighting to make sure legislators vote on the record, whether I'm fighting for term limits, whether I want legislators to have to disclose their income, these are all things that are good for the people of this state. What you will see me do is not only educate the legislators on why these issues will make them better legislators, but it'll also be me educating the public on why they deserve good government and how when you have a good government, you have a working government. Mr. McMaster, next question is for you. What do you believe is the root cause of South Carolina having the lowest number in the nation of females elected to office? I suppose there are not that many running. <laughs> Which is the root of my question. And why is that? <laughs> Why but is I, that, but I promise Why you, Nikki that? Haley makes up for all of them. <laughs> is that an endorsement? <laughs> well, almost. Give me, give me a little time. Why, why do you believe we don't have more women? Because we have a state full of incredibly talented, sure bright, do. and qualified women. Why aren't they running for I'm, office? I'm married to one of them, and I, 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 they're all over the place. And you're right. I, I suppose that it. What one reason seriously is because it's it's hard to serve in that legislature. The sessions ought to be shorter. Uh, they, we could even go to every, some, some uh, states have them every, every other year in just 30 days or 60 days and I'll stretch out for six months and then you have committee meetings. I really think that's probably more government that we need and that adds, adds to the cost. But I, I tell you what we, we all ought to do is we ought to encourage all our sons and daughters to do all they can to participate in the life of their state. This is the greatest place in the whole world to live. I'm proud of it. I'll never apologize for it. I'll love it. I'll fight for it. I'll defend it. And I, I want every son and daughter of South Carolina to know that the whole world is open to them here in this state, including in government. And as, as governor, that is the, site, the type of vision and type of promotion that I would make for our state and our wonderful people. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bauer, we have an email question from one of our viewers, Sarah Taylor from Columbia. She asks, school choice can be accomplished without giving tax money to private schools. In light of current cuts in teacher layoffs in public education, do you think tax money should go to private schools, yes or no? Yes. Okay, if yes, please explain how your strategy will help public education. Well, number one, half the money stays at that school, so you're educating less children, but you have more resources to educate the children that are still at that school. The current plan okay. allows that half the money follows the student, half the money stays at the school that, that may need help to educate other children, so the other children are actually benefactors as well by more funding. Okay. Mr. Barrett, let's talk about your new ad out about the immigration debate, uh, supporting your support for a law here in South Carolina similar to the Arizona law. Without getting bogged down in, in the Arizona law, I think most of our viewers are educated enough to know exactly what it says. Here's the question. How would you make sure that it does not promote racial profiling, and how would you enforce it? Well, I, I think the Arizona law, and I, again, I know you didn't want to get bogged down on it, but I think it's very clear. Uh, it, it's not a racial profiling uh, bill. Uh, you have to, uh, somebody has to literally be arrested before they can check their, their nationality to check to see if they're an illegal alien or not. We've got a plan in South Carolina. We have a plan. And how we work this is we train our local and state law enforcement officers on how to enforce immigration laws. The problem is the federal government has not done that, and South Carolina needs to step up to the plate. Listen, I applaud the governor of Arizona for taking back her state, or at least trying to, and we can do that in South Carolina. We need to make sure we verify uh, that employers are doing the right thing. We need to make sure that we train our local law enforcement officials on how to incarcerate, but not only incarcerate and check whether these men and women are legal or illegal, but how to deport them also. It's a way that South Carolina it can be masters of its own destiny. Okay, let's do a short answer question, just a yes or no from each of the candidates on this same issue regarding that Arizona immigration law. Do you support or don't you support, yes or no, do you support passing that similar, a similar type of legislation here in South Carolina? Mr. Bauer? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes, I've supported it and I've co-sponsored similar legislation and Mr. Arizona. McMaster. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's do another quick answer. This is yes or no. Do you support using lottery funds for K through 12 education? Mr. McMaster. I would not you no I would I would not disrupt the program that we have now however we do need to provide more funding for K through 12 particularly excuse me at so the that, lower level we've got to get more money in early childhood that, that was a no correct 
that was a no? That's right. A no. Okay, Ms. Haley. Not until we reform the way spending happens in K through 12. Too much money is going to the top and not enough in the classroom. Once we get it to the classroom, I would look at the lottery. Okay, reminder, quick answer, yes or no. Mr. Barrett. No, the Constitution says we cannot. Okay, you didn't hear me. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bauer. <laughs> yes, did we have yes. yes? Yes. Okay, we got a yes for Mr. Bauer. Let's have another quick answer question. And again, because we're so tight on time, we just want to give voters an idea of where you stand on some really important issues. Bruce Lawrence in Columbia would like to know uh, this from each one of you. Given the environmental disaster in the Gulf, do you support offshore drilling for oil and gas? Let's start with Mr. Bauer. And we'll give you 30 seconds for this. What we're told is, is that natural gas is really what's off the coast of South Carolina. We don't have any natural gas bills, so I would be 100% for natural gas and uh, I would I would proceed with caution with oil because number one we don't even know that we have a whole bunch of it out there Mr. Barrett four billion cubic feet of natural gas off the coast of South Carolina the National Petroleum Institute says you said it could be 2,200 jobs and 250 million dollars worth of royalties yes I support it South Carolina can control the permitting process we can make it as lenient or as, or as strict as we need to and we need to make sure we take care of our environment nuclear power is the answer we have seven reactors here we know how to do it. We need more. It's clean. It's green. We need alternative fuel. We have a lot we can do, particularly in agriculture, particularly along that I-95 corridor. I think natural gas is there. I would prefer that. Oil is dangerous, as we've seen, but it is a national security issue. We've got to be very, very careful. Thank you. 30 seconds, Ms. Haley. Yes, I do support it, and I support it because we need to do everything we can to make sure our country is independent. What we need to look at is just as if there were a plane crash. We always go back and study and say, how could we make sure this doesn't happen again? We need to do that with the um, situation that's been in Louisiana and make sure that we study it and make sure we do everything we can to keep us clean, protect us, but we need to always remember that we have to make this country energy independent. Thank you. One last question. You'll have 10 seconds for this answer. Mark Sanford, John Edwards, Bill Clinton, all men who have cheated on their wives while in power. When faced with opportunities and temptations that come with power, how do you stay true to your family, your faith, and your values? Mr. Barrett. Character is not one of the things that matters. It's the only thing that matters. I have a prayer group and accountability with men and women around me that pray for me, that keep me accountable. Uh, that's the only way we need to do it. Mr. Thank Bauer. Uh, I would say this. For the last 14 years, I've had 11 opponents that have spent millions of dollars trying to dig up everything they could on me and make allegations that were totally untrue. And it's disheartening, but I've stayed true to my faith, and I've continued over some difficult times in my own life with a plane crash that substantially changed my life and brought me closer to the Lord. Uh, all the way along the, the, the course of life, I've continued to just stay true to my values. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Haley? You know, I think the answer is you keep the Lord, you keep your family, and you keep your friends very close. And you always remember that you have to stay as humble as possible and understand that service is just that. It is service. And you are being held to a higher standard, and so you have much more service that you have to give. And you're, you're a role model to everybody that follows you. And Mr. McMaster. Strong, strong faith and strong families are the answers to those kind of questions. You do what the good book says and you'll be all right. We want to thank all of the Republican gubernatorial candidates for joining us tonight. We wish we had more time, but I'm sure we will see you again on the campaign trail between now and primary day, which is three weeks away. Thank you very much. And we're going to give the Republicans an opportunity to exit the stage. And then we're going to come back and question the Democrats. Who has the best service in Columbia? It's not Lexus, Mercedes, Honda, or Toyota. It's Stokes Trainer in Newberry. And we want to thank all our great and valued customers for voting us number one. And to let you know, we're continuing our promise to you. So check out our great selection of Chevrolet, Pontiac, Cadillac, Buick, and GMCs, and our huge selection of pre-owned vehicles on our website. And remember, at Stokes Trainer, our commitment doesn't end when you buy, it begins. Are you guilty of driving while talking on your cell phone? Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for the Jupiter Jack, the most convenient, hands-free device for any...